making this case even more compelling is the fact that the entire confrontation was recorded. A monster is in the house. A 400-pound creep about to molest a 14-year-old girl in the shower. What the f are you doing? Stopped in his tracks when this Marine dad goes commando to catch a predator. You're lucky I don't have a shotgun right now. I got one loaded. Go over your You're listening to the unbelievable audio of the ultimate fighting match between parent and pervert. Don't move until the cops get here and save you from me. Brandon Moore exacts Texas-style revenge after he learns his best friend had been molesting his daughter Madeline for five years. He gave Crime Watch Daily permission to use her photographs. My plan was to murder him. Just straight up, would have had no qualms. You really were gonna kill him? Oh, absolutely. How did this disgusting deviant weasel his way into Brandon's family, grooming his young daughter to do the worst things imaginable? I am not a child. The nightmare begins when Maddie's family moves from Minnesota to Waco, Texas. The first person Brandon and his wife Leon meet, their new neighbor, a single man named Sean Foster. We came down one weekend. Leon and I drove down to buy a house, and that was the weekend that we met Sean Foster. Your very first weekend in Texas. Yes. He was parking in his driveway, and we were talking about that we couldn't afford the after-school program for all three kids. And he said, what do you need me to do? And we said, well, we need somebody to pick up the kids after school. It's a hot Texas summer day, and he helps us clean the whole backyard. And I'm like, wow, here's a really nice neighbor. You know, who wants to be out here working in the heat, let alone on somebody else's house? The so-called nice neighbor quickly becomes a member of the family. How big a part of the family did Sean Foster become? A regular part of the family. We ended up switching house keys. He went on vacation with us, and he had spent several holidays with us. Everyone in the family called him Uncle Sean, everyone but Maddie. I just remember thinking, like, there's something wrong with this guy. Like, he's, he's not okay. You instantly picked up on that. Yeah, every time he came around, I felt sick before he even started doing things. Maddie, now 16 years old, wants the world to hear her horror story. Her father gave Crime Watch Daily permission to interview her. She says she was only nine years old when Foster began his sick seduction. He would take pictures of me. Naked? No, he'd be like, oh, turn around, and he would take pictures of my butt. Maddie says those seemingly innocent pictures turned into some not so innocent touching, something she says that confused her. You were being inappropriately touched, but you weren't sure. Yeah, like, I didn't have the words for it. I was nine at first, and I was like, you know, why, why is he touching my chest? Like, I don't have anything there. As I got older, I was just like, okay, no one talks about what this is, so I must be the only person going through it. And I didn't want to come forward and be like, hey, this is happening, and have people say, oh, it's normal, or have people say, like, oh, there's something wrong with you. Maddie seemed locked in a prison with a pedophile as her jailer. I remember that he wanted to take Madeline to go get her nails done. And so they went and got other little hairdo things and stuff like that, little barrettes for her to put in her hair. What kind of a man does right. that? And I remember thinking that's really weird and Maddie came home upset. I was like, what's going on? And he's like, oh, she, she just got upset. She couldn't get her nails done. Leon and Brandon thought Maddie's depression was because of some of the boys at school, but it was the adult creep across the street. So when guys at school started calling me mean things and picking on me, it was just like, they know I'm a slut because, you know, Sean's been calling me that since I'm nine, so I obviously am. And so my stomach would hurt so bad from like being nervous and the anxiety. I would have to go down to the office, to the nurse, because I was in actual pain from all the stress. And finally got so bad, my mom was like, maybe we just need to move schools. So we moved schools. The problem wasn't the school, it was Sean. Maddie says she lived in fear. Did you feel threatened by him? 
yeah, he, I knew he had a lot of guns. So when they move a few miles down the highway to the Waco suburb of Lorena, she thinks that would be the end of her ordeal. But she says it only got worse. Foster still came over. And she says when she was in the shower, Foster surprised her by walking right into the bathroom. I hear the door open. I'm just like, what do I do? Am I just supposed to pretend like he's not in here? And the door had shut. And I was like, okay, he's gone. And I start like washing my face. And I turn and he's staring at me. I just stood there. Maddie continued to suffer in silence. Then Foster makes an offer. He hires her to work for his pool construction company. Did he buy her work clothes? He did. Then when she put on some of the stuff, they were these skimpy little shorts. And I was like, why are we getting those? That's all they have. Who said that? John. Skimpy shorts to work. Yeah. And he bought them. Yeah. The warning signs were starting to flash red. Brandon says he thought it strange that Maddie got paid for doing no real work. So you think he just made up this whole I'll employ you at my pool company thing to have more time with her. It was a pretty low skilled type of position. She said, I don't want to work for Sean anymore. And we said, why? And she goes, I don't know what I'm getting paid. Sometimes we just go to his house and we hang out. Maddie says one day while riding to a construction job, the conversation turned scary. He told me that he wanted me to try drugs. I was like, you have drugs? And he goes, yeah, I have some at my house. And that just scared me. I was like, oh my God. So we're riding along, and then a few minutes later, he was like, I'm gonna have sex with you. And I'm like, oh my God, he's gonna drug me and rape me. And I was just like, oh my God, this is gonna be it for me. This is as bad as it can get. That's when Maddie knew she would no longer be a silent victim. That's the biggest thing that pushed me to tell, because I was like, that's too far. Oh my God, this is gonna go way farther than I thought it would. But just as she was about to tell, her father had the mother of all headaches and went to the ER. The doctor said, we think this might be a brain aneurysm. It could get serious. Sean offered to watch Maddie. After all, he was her uncle Sean. It turns out Brandon's headache was just a pulled muscle. But when they came home from the hospital, they had a rude awakening. Leon says Sean was sleeping in Maddie's bedroom. And what did you think of that? It blew my mind. Why are you in my little girl's room? Go sleep on our bed if you want a bed. Or sleep on the couch. Absolutely. The next day, Maddie had to go to the doctor for a physical. Leon was running behind schedule, so Foster offered to take her. So I was a couple minutes late, and I walk in, and it's like the nurse has already got Maddie back there, and she's trying to get me to come, and Sean's bamboozling me. He's like, yeah, I was trying to go back, but they wouldn't let me. And so what was he trying to do? Go back into the appointment with Madeline and be in the exam room with her. Which, why? I can tell something's wrong with her. And then I'm like, so what's up? And she goes, well, he texts and drives, Mom. And it happens a lot. And I'm like, is there anything else you need to tell me? And she goes, well, yeah, Mom. He touches me and he tries kissing me a lot. Leon is livid but she waits until she gets home so she can tell Brandon in person. And she goes, Sean's been touching Madeline. And he came over and he touched her while you were in the hospital. And if she would have told me over the phone, I would have gone to his house and I would have killed him. I said, I, I need to go do something. And so she drove me over to our pastor's house. And I was really thankful he was there, but at first he was like, well, I'd want to kill him too. That would be murder even in Texas. How could they get ironclad evidence against Foster and stop him for good? Next, Leon and Brandon take matters into their own hands. I caught him as he turned this corner to run out. The explosive confrontation and the sting operation that literally catches the predator in the act. You talk to 14-year-old girl. 